Sunday in Lent. So welcome. I do have a few announcements. For those of the dining out group, today is the last day to sign up, and it is the Italian village in Depew that they are going to. The Italian village, okay? I guess there's an Italian garden there as well, but it's the village that you're going to. The Lenten journey for this week, which was to be held at 14 Holy Helpers, has been canceled. So uh, I, there is the schedule in your announcements. Uh, just disregard that one. It was canceled uh, as of this morning. Um, it began last week at Queen of Heaven. Uh, I was the preacher. There was a nice turnout, so I'm, I'm kind of sorry to see that there won't be one this week, but they will pick up the next week then. And let's see. One more thing. After this service, we are having a hot dog lunch. So please join us. There's plenty of hot dogs, just r something very simple for lunch before you go on with the rest of your day. At the end of the service, I will give a blessing, uh, a food blessing. So you can just go in there and grab some food and uh, enjoy your conversation and a light lunch. It is Lent. We'll be moving through it pretty quickly. So uh, I hope your Lenten journey is going well. With that, I will have you stand, and we will continue with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God. We confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. First reading for this morning comes from Genesis in the 17th chapter. Now when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and you will be exceedingly numerous. And Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. We'll read Psalm 22 responsively, beginning with the refrain. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor, the poor shall, shall eat and be satisfied. Let, Let those who seek the Lord give praise. praise. May, May your hearts, hearts live forever. forever. All, All the ends of the earth, earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion, For dominion belongs, belongs to the, to the Lord, Lord who, who rules over, over the nations. The nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. The Their descendants, descendants shall, shall serve the Lord, Lord whom, whom they, they shall, shall proclaim, proclaim to generations, generations to, come. to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. All the all ends, the ends of, the earth of the earth shall, shall remember, remember the and turn to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Second reading comes from Romans in the fourth chapter. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through righteousness of faith. If, it's utterance, if it is the utterance of the law who are the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void, for the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends upon faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also those who share in the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God, in whom I believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence things that do not exist, hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith, in his faith and he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words it was reckoned to him were, wor were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, 
and who was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, What can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I used this illustration in one of my Facebook postings this past week. Ask a Christian to describe other Christians and the answers will likely be giving, compassionate, loving, respectful. Ask a non-Christian, on the other hand, and the more likely descriptors you'll get for Christians are hypocritical, judgmental, self-righteous. Non-Christians are also far more likely to say Christians do not represent the teachings of Jesus. Well, these are the results of a survey taken in 2022 uh, by the Episcopal Church, illustrating the difference of how Christians and non-Christians, and I would add to that people uh, who have uh, just become disjointed and don't go to church anymore, non-practicing, as we would say, how they view it, how we view Christianity in the States. Bishop Michael Curry of uh, of the Episcopal Church said, there is a disconnect between the reality of Jesus and the perceived reality of Christians. Closing the gap between people's perceptions of Jesus and their perceptions of his followers will take a new reformation, according to Curry, one that includes not only representing a Christianity, that looks more like Jesus to the rest of the world, but also better formation of Christians around Jesus' teachings and life. That's good news to me. And Bishop Curry uh, said also, the church has got a lot more to do, and that's a good thing. He also recalled the words of a former parishioner who said that Christians love the Christmas Jesus, which we just celebrated a couple months ago. Christmas Jesus is good. I love Christmas, Jesus, but the baby did grow up. So let's listen to the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus. Love your enemies. Let's explore what that means. I can tell you after nearly 20 years in the hospital, often when I walk in, I may be welcomed, and I also may be pushed back, even to the point of, please leave now. Because we do have to grow from Christmas Jesus to the adult Jesus. Fortunately, we have Lent. In today's gospel, Jesus lays out what it means to be a, a true disciple, come what may. 
If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. These are the difficult words of Jesus. These are the hard words, the ones we don't always want to hear. We would rather hear other words. We have no problem when Jesus invites us to come to me, all of you that are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Who doesn't appreciate words like that? And so when you think of your uh, favorite verses, what comes to mind? Let me give you just a couple of, of examples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. That's from John 14. And my personal favorite is, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. And Jesus goes on to talk about the birds of the air and the lilies of the field and how they neither toil nor spin, yet King Solomon in all his glory was not robed as radiantly as they. And of course, again, from John's Gospel, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Those are the verses that give us comfort. And in today's world, we need them. We need those desperately. Today's Gospel, not so much comforting as challenging. My suggestion is always, though, to begin with the verses that you do find comforting, the stories that you can relate to, and then move deeper into the covenant with God, and then exactly what that means. Jesus is clear. Discipleship is denying ourselves and taking up the cross, and those are difficult words. And it can seem overwhelming as God's people. So a better place to start is the first reading for today. God enters into a covenant with Abram, who will now be called Abraham. Our God is a covenant God, not a contract, but a covenant. A contract is a deal with specific tasks. A covenant, however, is based on a relationship, one that involves a promise. God's covenant with Abraham begins when the Lord says, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. God promises to be in a relationship with Abraham and to make him a father of many. And in response, Abraham is asked and to promise before God, uh, to walk before God and, not, and be blameless. The good news is that God is faithful to the covenant staying close to Abraham and making him the ancestor of a multitude of nations. This covenant is an everlasting covenant. Good news for Abraham and good news for us. As for that blameless part, well, Abraham didn't succeed in being blameless, nor can we succeed in achieving such a standard of perfection. But God is faithful even when we are not. That's the good news. And God continued that covenant to Moses and Joshua as they went into the promised land, to Samuel and David and Solomon, to the prophets with the fall of the two kingdoms even into exile. And yes, to the sending of Jesus who is asking the same of us, come, be in a relationship with God, deny yourself, take up the cross. Now, as I've mentioned before, Mark is writing at a chaotic time, about 70, the fall of Jerusalem, and he knows there will be persecution, because there already has been. By the time Mark wrote this, Nero uh, had uh, wreaked some havoc on the Christian community in Rome. Now, in our day, I imagine we don't think much about the persecution or physical persecution, but it does exist in some countries. This past week, a colleague of mine posted this to her Facebook, to the Facebook account. Uh, over the past few weeks, we've heard of the death of, of that Russian leader, Alexei Navalny. He was uh, certainly a threat to Vladimir Putin, and he died. He was an opposition leader. He was a lawyer, an anti-corruption activist, and yes, a political prisoner. He organized demonstrations, anti-government demonstrations, and ran for office so that he could advocate reforms. Well, during a trial, these are his words, or partial words anyway. This is what Navalny said. 
The fact is that, is that I am a Christian, which usually rather sets me up as an example of constant ridicule in the Anti-Corruption Foundation, because mostly our people are atheists, and I was once quite a militant atheist myself. But now I am a believer, and that helps me in my activities because everything becomes much, much easier. I think about things less. There are fewer dilemmas in my life because there is a book in which, in general, it is more or less clearly written what action to take in every situation. It's not always easy to follow this book, of course, but I am actually trying. And that he added that he was motivated by the words of Jesus, especially, blessed are those who hunger and search hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. And this is what he finished with. I've always thought that this particular commandment is more or less an instruction to activity. And so, while certainly not really enjoying the place where I am, I have no regrets about coming back or about what I am doing. It's fine because I did the right thing. On the contrary, I feel a real kind of satisfaction because at some difficult moment I did as required by the instructions and did not betray the commandment. Now that's taking up the cross. That's denying oneself even unto death. The difficult words of Jesus come now in Lent as we walk with Jesus to that most difficult place, the cross. They're not easy. But, but, and there is always a but in my sentences, we are able to do them because Jesus has gone before us. And yes, as my opening illustration reminds us, we do have a lot of work to do to take the words of Jesus and live them, to know the story so that the world does come to view more of us as giving and compassionate and loving. And I know, we are, I know you are, I know that we can be, and again, as I said last week, I'm preaching to the choir. But I don't want us to be hypocritical and judgmental or self-righteous. And very many are. In this season, we are to grow in faith and trust in what God is doing and has always done since way back with Abraham and that everlasting covenant. It is a tough task. But because of God's everlasting covenant, we are able to rise above the fray, deny ourselves, and take up the cross. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing. We come now to the Nicene Creed. Let us proclaim our faith. With the whole church, let us confess. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in ju to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, for the well-being of creation, and a world in need. We turn to you for meaning, holy God. Nurture in your children the gifts of the Spirit poured out, from bapti poured out in baptism, and let the mind of Christ guide the church. Give wisdom and discernment to our bishops, pastors, deacons, teachers, and leaders. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We turn to you for renewal. Save lives and ecosystems threatened by pollution and a changing climate. Cleanse the earth's waters and restore the soil. Preserve rainforests, deserts, and wildlife that generations to come may cherish your creation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We turn to you for justice. Uphold the worth and dignity of every person, especially any who experience hatred or rejection because of their gender, ability, sexual orientation, color, ethnicity, or religion. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We turn to you for healing. Send compassionate helpers to any who suffer because of war and violence. Shelter unhoused people. Befriend those who are lonely. Bring hope to any in despair, and console the bereaved, especially those listed in the bulletin on St. John's prayer list, those we name silently in our hearts or out loud at this time. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We turn to you for purpose. Remind us of your faithfulness to this congregation, increase our trust in your guidance, and keep us near the cross. Grant that our acts of service will express Christ's sacrificial love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We turn to you for peace. We honor the saints who lived in service to others. Inspire us by their example until you gather us into your kingdom. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you to stand. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with your neighbors. And then you may be seated.
I invite you to stand. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gives, gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. And now let us be bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bread for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts. Come. You may be seated and I invite the choir forward.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen.
unanswerable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Before uh, this blessing, let me offer a table blessing as we go to lunch. Gracious Lord God, we give you thanks for the journey and all the food that you prepare as we journey towards Easter. So bless our, the food that we will have and bless our conver conversation and help us always to follow in your sure footsteps. Amen. And now, beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, share your bread.